I'd only been at GLAAD for a couple of months when we started hearing complaints about the George Lopez show. I knew the show from my son Javier. I used to let him stay up past his bedtime to watch it. Though it was, uh, I guess I thought it was kind of cool that a Latino kid uh, with, could watch a, a show on national late night uh, with a guy who had uh, a last name like his, a Hispanic name. The complaints, though, that we were getting were very disturbing. They were recurring. And what they talked about were George Lopez's efforts to prance around the stage in an effeminate way and call things that he didn't like, mas puto. For those of you who don't speak Spanish, mas puto means like a faggot. All I could think was my son, Javier, watching this show and learning from Lopez to laugh at people like his two dads. We reached out to the show at GLAAD. We talked first to the network and then to the distributor to push Lopez to drop the phrase. As a media watchdog, we were working to shape the images and opinions that my kids, that all kids and all people, see and hear and learn in the media. This is why we do it. We reached out, we expressed our concerns to George, and you know what? They agreed. George dropped the phrase. That's glad at work. Glad. But you see, GLAAD is more than a media watchdog. Last year, when right-wing activists went to Washington State to put their civil unions at law on the ballot, GLAAD's Adam Bass was there. He traveled there three times, the last time for seven entire weeks. He trained couples in Washington to talk persuasively about what was at stake. He met with editorial boards. He pushed the press to write stories about gay and lesbian families and what was at stake for them in this referendum. He was, for all intents and purposes, the communications director of this campaign. And when the good voters of Washington voted and they became the first state in this country to reject discrimination of relationships for our families at the ballot, Adam was a big reason why. And that is glad it worked. Glad is also a storyteller, like the story of anti-gay Reverend Rick Warren. Reverend Warren and other social conservative religious leaders who paint themselves as moderate here were working in Uganda to make a death penalty just for being gay. Glad partnered to put on the National Prayer Breakfast with dozens of other LGBT organizations. GLAAD was the press arm. We worked the press aggressively and successfully to get the story out and helped to turn U.S. and international opinion against Uganda and against Reverend Warren. That is GLAAD at work. Another way that GLAAD works is right here right here at the GLAAD Media Awards. We work to raise awareness, to raise the bar for all media, to show them America, our challenges, our hopes, our aspirations, and our courage, like ESPN.com did with Brendan Burke. These are stories about LGBT people. They're told fairly and accurately and with impact. Research like GLAAD's own Pulse of Equality poll last year, shows that Americans are becoming more supportive of gay people. What is it that's the cause of this change? The surveys tell us three things. Knowing someone who's gay, learning about LGBT issues in the news, and three, seeing gay people on television, in movies, and in all media. And what do these three things have in common? Visibility, visibility, visibility. And at a time when many of us fret over how it is we're going to win our equality at the ballot box, this visibility is a roadmap for us. It, visibility leads to respect. Respect leads to equality. And that's GLAAD, the media watchdog, the advocate, the storyteller, making LGBT people visible. 
making us respected, making us more equal every day. In this way, by, by speaking our truths, by believing that by telling these truths, we will reach this more equal circumstance. GLAD works alongside legal organizations and lobbying organizations to secure that greatest gift that our founding fathers and mothers gave to us and that we learned as children with liberty and justice for all. These are some of the things that we do, but there are those in our community, in the LGBT community, who are bitter they believe these words are empty promises. They believe that because of things like Proposition 8 in California, Question 1 in Maine, the New York State Senate, the New Jersey State Senate, they believe that these examples mean that we have somehow abandoned our principles. America has abandoned its principles when it comes to its gay children. The critics are right in one thing. They're right on the facts. We have suffered some very hard losses this year and last. But they're wrong on the lesson to take from these losses. In our country, if you tell your story, if you live your life visible to all, it leads to understanding. And that understanding makes equality inevitable. Why is it inevitable? You see, it's like a story. Once you tell a story, you can't untell it. Once you're visible, you can't be erased. Once, once you're equal, you can't be made unequal. We earn our equality ourselves through telling our stories one to another and through the media. This, this is the roadmap. This is the answer. And in a time of so many losses, this is the good news. The news that a certain president once said, we are the ones that we have been waiting for. One day, not so far away, we will live in a nation that embraces all of its children with liberty and justice for all. And young Will will be able to pledge in that America. And young Will and countless others will pledge, and the good news is that we are sitting in the driver's seat. We are the ones who will determine when we get there, and each of you coming here today are supporting the work of GLAAD that gets us there. The media advocacy, the watchdog, the partnering, the message, the voices that we amplify every day that tell America who gay people are, to lead to respect and acceptance and honor for who we are, that lead to equality. Visibility, respect, equality. It's as simple as that. You are in the driver's seat, and you are helping us get there. And from the bottom of my heart, as the new president of GLAAD, thank you all very, very much. I want, to, I want to end just with a few other thank yous. Thank you to the board of directors, so many of whom are here tonight, GLAD's board, to our, to our corporate sponsors, to our table hosts, and each of you. And one final thank you. You just met Joan Gary. Also here in the audience tonight is my predecessor, Neil Giuliano. Joan and Neil were incredible leaders for GLAAD, and I stand on their shoulders, and GLAAD stands on their shoulders, and we are grateful to them. Thank you, Neil, and thank you, Joan. Thank you all.